Welcome back. This is part two of the Godot 3.0 beginner tutorial. If you haven't watched part one yet, please go and watch that first and you'll be all caught up and ready for part two. In the last video, we created our player scene and now we want to make it move. And when you need functionality on a node that isn't available from the built-in settings over here in the inspector, that is when you need to add a script. So we're going to add a script to this player node by clicking the Add Script button right here. And this dialog box that pops up asks you some questions about how you want this script created. And so the language is going to be GDScript. It inherits Area2D because that's the type of node that we clicked on. The template, you can leave that default. Basically, you don't need to change any of these other things. It's going to name the script player.gd which matches the name of our scene node, so that's perfect. So just click Create, and then you will be in the script editor. And if you haven't encountered GDScript before, there's a link below to the GDScript introduction on the Godot website. I recommend you go take a look at it and then come back here, and all of this will make a little bit more sense to you. So in here, in our script editor, we have some information boxes over here on the side. I'm going to make these smaller because we don't need to look at them very much right now. And in here is our script. And the default script has some comments to give you some, uh, some information about how the script works and a little bit of default code that doesn't do anything just yet. So I've deleted the comments and I've made the font a little bit bigger so hopefully it's easier for you to read on the screen. The first thing we want to do is declare our member variables. Member variables are properties that you want to add to this particular node to increase its functionality. So for example, we, we might want to have a variable to decide how fast our character moves. So I can make a variable called speed and set it equal to some value. But that means if we are playing our game and we decide our, we want our character to move a little faster or a little slower, we would need to edit the script and change this number. So instead what we can do is export this variable like this. And what this says is I want a speed variable. It's going to be an integer. So in the parentheses here you put what type of variable you want it to be. And export means I want this to be visible in the inspector. So if I were to go over here and click on player now you can see I have a speed right here. So I can just click in here and set that. And now my speed is 400. And that makes it easier to change that property later. So let's click on script to get back to our script and declare our other variables. We're also going to have a velocity. This is going to track the player's movement and we'll be changing that as we press different keys on the keyboard. And then we're going to have a screen size variable that's going to be the size of the game window so that we can know when our player reaches the edges of the screen. Next is our ready function. This is a function that's called whenever the node is added to the scene. So it's the initialization code. This is the code you want the player to run when it first starts up. And we're going to figure out what our screen size is at this point. And so the command to do that is get viewport rec dot size. So that will get us the size of the screen. And if you go and change that in the project settings like we did at the beginning, the player will automatically know about those changes. Now for the movement, we need to look at the process function. And the process function is one that's run every frame, which means about 60 times per second. In here is where you want to do anything that you need to happen continuously. And we're going to do three things in this process function. We're going to check for input, which keys the player is pushing. We're going to move in that given direction, and we're going to play the appropriate animation to match what direction we're going in. So depending on what keys are being pressed, if none of them are being pressed, we want our velocity to be zero. So we're going to reset our velocity here. Then we're going to check which keys are being pressed, and we can do that by using input.isActionPressed. And then we say what action we want to talk about. Now, there are already some predefined actions, like UI write, 
which stands for the right arrow key. And these are defined in the project settings in a section called input map. And we're not going to go into that for this tutorial, but you can go in and assign custom inputs in that input map if you have a particular setup you want to use. We're going to use these defaults for the left, right, up, and down arrow keys. Now what this function is going to return is either true if the key is currently being held down or false if it isn't. So if it is down, we want to take our velocity and we want to make its x positive because we're going to the right. And then we want to do the same for the other arrow keys. So I've copied and pasted in and now I have right going positive in the x direction, left goes negative. So you can notice if right and left are both held down at the same time, we add one and subtract one, which leaves you at zero, so you won't move at all. And then down and up do the same thing, but for the y direction. Now one problem we'll have is if we hold down right and down at the same time, then our velocity vector is going to be one in x and one in y, one comma one, which is gonna make the player move faster because it's adding a horizontal and a vertical movement together then it would be moving just horizontally or just vertically. So the way we fix that is if our velocity length is greater than zero then we want to normalize the velocity. So velocity equals velocity dot normalized Normalizing a vector means resetting its length to 1. So if we're only going to the right, our length of our vector will be 1. If we're going diagonally, now our length will be 1. But we don't want to move at 1. We want to move at our speed. So we're going to multiply that by speed. And now we have our velocity set correctly based on whatever keys are being held down. So now that we know our velocity, we know how much to move. So let's change our position, the position of our area 2D node, and we're just going to add the velocity times delta, which is the time step of the frame, which we get from process. And let's try it out and see if it works. So if we click on our player node, here's our scene. This button right here will play the current scene. So if we hit play, we're going to see our game window. Our characters up there in the corner because we haven't changed this position. But if I press the arrow keys, I can move around in all four directions and diagonals. But we do go off the screen because we're not using that screen size limit to stop us from moving off. And so to fix that, what we want to do is we want to clamp our position. We want to clamp the x value of the position between 0 and the width of the screen and the y value between 0 and the height of the screen, so it can't go outside of those bounds. So we take the position x and we clamp. This is what the clamp function does. The value we want to clamp is the position x between 0 and screen size x. And then we just want to take that same thing and do it again with y. And then we'll have our character should not be able to go off the screen. If we run the scene again, we stop when we hit the edges. Now we do go halfway off because our position of our character is the center of the node, but that's fine. That is good enough for us not to get lost anywhere off the screen. Now we're checking input and we're moving, we need to handle the animations. And we want to do two things. We want to play and stop based on whether we're moving. When we stop moving, we should stop playing the animation. But also we want to pick which direction we're going so that we can play the up animation when we're going up and etc. So when, we're, when our speed is greater than zero, we're moving. So we're going to take our, we're going to take our animated sprite and we're going to say play. And that's going to play its animation. But if we're not moving, we want to take that animated sprite and stop it. And that's going to just start and stop the playing whenever we 
move, which is going to look like this. So see, whenever I move, it's playing the animation and then stopping when I let go. And that's fine, except I'm always pointing to the right because we're playing the right animation. To change which direction we're pointing in, we want to use on our animated sprite these properties, flip H and flip V. Flip horizontal, either true or false, flips the sprite in that direction, and vertical flips it this way. So depending on what direction we're going, we're going to trigger one of these to flip the image of the sprite, and then we're going to switch between the up and right animations. So back to our script, we need to decide which way we're going. So if our velocity x is not equal to 0, well, that means we are moving left or right. So we want to take our animated sprite, and we want to set the animation that we're going to use to right. And we also want to take it and set its flip v to false, because we don't want it to be flipped when we're moving side to side. And finally, we want to take our animated sprite and set its flip h to true if we're going to the left and false if we're going to the right. Well, that's just is the velocity dot x less than zero. So if our x velocity is less than zero, we're going to the left, so flip h will be true. If it's false, flip h will be false. And then we just need to do the same thing for the y direction. So we're going to take check our velocity dot y, and if that's not equal to zero, then we're moving up or down. So we take our animated sprite and set its animation. We want to use the up animation that we made. And we want to set its flip v to whether we're going up or down. So velocity dot y greater than 0. Now if we play the scene again, we should see the animation changing based on which direction we're moving in. So if I go left or right, my eye points that way. If I go down or up, I'm playing that animation. Once you're sure you have the animation working right and all the movement, go back up to your ready and add hide. We want this player to be invisible when the game first starts. They're not going to appear until we've pressed the start button and started playing the game. So we want them hidden at the beginning. So now if you hit play, your, your player is going to be invisible. And now we can start talking about collisions. So we want to get ready for this player to be able to detect the mobs hitting it. So we're going to make a signal called hit. And so we're going to emit that when the player dies so that the game will know to pop up the game over screen, play the death sound, all that kind of thing. And so first we need to detect, did we hit something? Well, if we click on our Area 2D node, down here next to the inspector is another tab called Node. And in there it lists a whole bunch of signals that the Area 2D node can produce. And since the enemies are going to be rigid body 2Ds, they are bodies, so we want the body entered signal. So if we click on that, and then we click Connect, we can connect that to a function in our player. And Godot will automatically name this function, and we can leave that as the default. We don't have to change any of this stuff. We can just hit Connect. And now our player script has a function created called onPlayerBodyEntered. So whenever a body enters the boundaries of this player's collision shape, right, which we defined, then the code in this function will be run. And what we want this function to do is hide the player. We want it to emit that hit signal that we defined so that the game will know that the player died. And then we also want to set monitoring equal to false, meaning we want this player to stop detecting collisions. If we just hide it 
it's still going to detect when things hit it. And we don't want, if two mobs hit us, you know, one after another, we don't want to have a double hit. So we need to turn monitoring off. But you can't just set that one equal to false directly in the middle of a collision. So you have to use a command called call deferred. And what we want to do is we want to set monitoring to false. And what that does is it just sets it to that as soon as it's able to. And then we need one more function. And this function is called start. And what this does is tell the player where to start when the game starts. And so we're just going to have the game say, hey player, start at this position. So we're going to set our position equal to that position. We're going to unhide. And we're going to set our monitoring equal to true. And now we're finished with the player script. I know it was pretty long, almost 50 lines of code and uh, 15 minutes or more of video, but the player is the heart of the game. There's a lot going on with the player. We had to write a lot of code to get it to do everything we wanted it to do. In the next video, we're going to start talking about making the mobs for the game.